Our first speaker doesn't really need an introduction. You might know him as an assistant professor at Princeton, the chief scientist at Together AI, the inventor of the flash attention algorithm. Treat out, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, really excited to be here. This is a really good vibe. Uh, I'll be talking about how to optimize attention for modern GPUs. And uh, this is going to touch on a bunch of joint work with, uh, with some of the folks at, at Kofax, folks at Meta, and some folks at uh, NVIDIA, some of, which, uh, some of whom uh, are here, like uh, Vijay, who's leading a, a hack session. Um, OK, so um, let's get started. Just a little bit of motivation. Um, why do we care about attention? Um, well, there are tons of applications that we need um, long context, long sequences. So for example, in NLP, um, you want to have new capabilities like reasoning over books and, and, and play and, and code bases. Um, in computer vision, you want to, mo uh, to close the reality gap where you want to model really high resolution images um, to give more robust insights. And usually if you use something like vision transformer, uh, high res images translate to long sequences. Um, that could also open new areas. Um, I have collaborators at, uh, at, at Stanford who work on um, audio modeling, video modeling, uh, medical imaging, um, and uh, their data is naturally modeled as, as sequences of, of up to millions of steps. And so um, the, the dominant architecture right now, the transformer, uh, has a hard time deal scaling up to uh, millions of steps. For, uh, you know, one, one way you do that is things like ring attention. Um, but uh, the, underlying, um, the underlying algorithm and the underlying hardware, we, we still need to optimize for that. And if we can optimize for that, um, we can open up a bunch of new areas, um, not just chatbot, but actually um, things like AI for science and, and, and so on. So uh, this is why we care, or I personally care, about modeling long sequences. Um, so what is the challenge? Um, the challenge is that efficiency is a bottleneck, um, especially if you use attention. Um, so here I'm using context length to mean how many elements in the sequence does the current element interact with. And um, what happens if you just increase the, the context length? So that sounds simple enough. Turns out efficiency is a huge problem here. Um, it can slow down or completely stop training. Uh, so here's an example of, I'm just taking Megatron LM. This was two years ago, uh, running on A100. And if you have context length 2K, you get very reasonable speed. This is around 50% uh, um, uh, MFU, 50% of the theoretical max of the device, which is, which is quite good. But the moment you increase context length to 8K, things start to slow down significantly, or you go, go out of memory. Um, so this is a, uh, you know, we can't just brute force and, and increase context length. So we need to scale to longer sequences. Um, to, uh, and in order to do that, we got to make attention uh, a lot more efficient. So I'll talk about um, uh, our recent work, Flash Attention 3, um, targeting Hopper GPUs. And I'll talk about some of the new features on, on modern GPUs that we want to pay attention to, things like asynchrony, uh, warp specialization, low precision, and so on. OK, so a little background on, on attention. Maybe a lot of you are familiar. Um, so I'll go over this pretty quickly, uh, just so that we're on the same page in terms of terminology. So we have as input the query and the key. These are, if, if a single head is, is um, n by d, where n is the sequence length, d is the, the um, head dimension. n is on the order of thousands, or ideally we want to go up to a million. Uh, and d is a head dimension, which is usually quite small, on the order of around a couple hundreds. So when you multiply them together, you get a similarity score. You do softmax, um, and this is what softmax looks like. You multiply by the value, which is also provided, to get an output. Um, and it turns out the bottleneck is in these uh, intermediate steps where you have to scale quadratically in, in sequence lane because you have these um, large matrices that you need to usually write out, um, the, um, the score matrix and the attention matrix. So our goal is to not have to write these matrices down. Um, and with a little bit of kernel fusion plus some algorithmic optimization, so you essentially use online softmax, you can avoid this. And that was essentially the idea of, of, of flash attention. Um, so I, I won't go over this too much. But uh, so you know, flash attention came out about two years ago. Back then, it was about 2 to 4x speed up over kind of the best baseline. Um, and significant memory reduction, so um, you can scale to much longer sequences. And this was essentially optimized for A100, right? Um, and when we took that code, uh, this is flash attention two, we took that code and we ran on, on H100, um, we got to about uh, 350 teraflops per second. 
the H100, the max is around 1,000. So it's about 35% of what the device is, is, is capable of. Um, so you know, we, we essentially took the A100 code and run on H100 um, and get you know, reasonable speed, but there's quite a bit of headroom. You know, this is a 35% MFU, 35% uh, of the theoretical max. So there's a whole lot more we, we can do. How do we optimize for modern hardware? And I'll talk about why the, H, the, the hopper um, is, is quite a bit different and requires uh, a, a different way of thinking about programming. Um, so uh, this is joint work with, uh, with a bunch of folks at, at Kofax, Meta, and NVIDIA, as I mentioned. Um, uh, a lot of the code was written by, 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 by Jay and, 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 and Ganesh. Um, and so I'll, I'll just talk about three things that we, we, we care about um, for the H100. First is you want to use these new instructions. Uh, warp group MMA for higher throughput. You want to use the TMA to do a lot of the memory loading. Um, this, uh, I won't go over the first one too much because it's um, um, conceptually straightforward. But uh, the second one, asynchrony, I think is a lot more interesting. So this is a different way of thinking about programming. Um, where you need to overlap the, the gem, the matrix multiply, and the softmax. Um, and Hopper uh, has great support for this. Um, we were building on Cutlass 3, which has great support for, 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 for asynchronous uh, programming. Um, and we had to use techniques like overlapping between different warp groups uh, using swarps, warp specialization and ping pong, uh, as well as intra-warp group overlapping, and I'll talk about what those means. Um, and finally, I'll talk about low precision FP8. Um, Okay, so new instruction. Um, okay, so the upshot is you can get about 1.6 to 3x speed up. Um, you know, it's the same algorithm, but a different way of programming, different instruction. Um, there's usually, you know, for, for example, in this particular case, we, we got up to 3x speed up uh, compared to flash attention too. So um, put another way, it, you can scale to two to 3x longer sequences uh, for the same resource. Okay, so new instructions. Why do we care about these new instructions? Um, for the A100, this instruction called MMA sync. Um, in the H100, uh, the instruction is called warp group MMA. Um, and if you don't use this um, instruction, you can only reach about two thirds of the, the, the peak throughput of the tensor core. Um, so you really do want to use the new instruction if you're compute bound. Um, the other thing is the TMA, which does uh, memory loading for you. Uh, essentially, instead of using each thread to do index calculation, um, you, there's a hardware unit that does the index calculation for you and saves a bunch of register. Um, it also makes things more asynchronous, and that's, that's helpful, as I'll, I'll talk about. Okay, so uh, using the new instructions, relatively straightforward. Cutlass has great support for it. They, I think uh, Pradeep has written like a, a hundred line example of implementing a matrix multiply on, on, on Hopper. So this is on, on Cutlass uh, tutorial, so I highly recommend you guys checking that out. Is not that complicated, you know, using um, uh, warp group MMA and TMA, right? Um, okay, so um, once you've used the new instruction, you get you know most of the way there, um, but there are a bunch of things you can still optimize. One of which is exploiting uh, asynchrony. So why do we care about asynchrony? It's not it was it wasn't uh, so much prevalent in, in, in Ampere in A100, but uh, for Hopper, you see a lot of the Jam implementation, especially from Cutlass. Um, uh, exploit this, this uh, asynchrony. So why, why asynchrony? So this is, goes back to this old um, Amdahl's law, uh, which, is, it's, which says that the overall performance improvement by optimizing a single part of the system is limited by the fraction of time that improved part is actually used. Um, so here's an example. Um, uh, so I, I won't go through the, the, the exact example, but you, if you work through the flash attention algorithm and you count you know, how many flops you need to do for, for matrix multiply and how many flops you do uh, for, for softmax, um, you see that the, the, the matrix multiply flops is way, way higher than the softmax flops, but the, soft, the softmax requires this instruction called the exponential instruction. It uses this uh, multifunction unit. Um, and that multifunction unit is way, way, way slower, has much, much lower throughput. I think it's on your hundreds times lower throughput than the matrix multiply. So that means that you can make the multi multiply really, really fast, but you're still gonna be bottlenecked by this, this uh, exponential um, instruction. It's called um, exponential two. 
So you can work out, and for you know, head dim 128, BF uh, 16, 16 bit, you see that the exponential actually takes half the number of cycles as, as matrix multiply. Um, so most people just think of, uh, only care about matrix multiply flops, but it turns out, um, because the exponential unit is, is so, so much lower throughput, um, the exponential um, takes half the number of, of, of flops, uh, of cycles. Um, so that means that if you have to run these things sequentially, um, the tensor core, you know, for a significant fraction of a time, is just sitting there waiting for the, the, the exponential function. Um, so, um, and this gets even worse for lower precision, and this will get even worse for newer and newer GPUs, where it's much easier to optimize, to, to make the tensor cores go faster um, than some of these more complicated units like the, 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 the exponential. So the answer is we need to do these things asynchronously. So the tensor cores are busy computing the, the, the matrix multiply why the exponential unit is, is busy computing exponential. Okay, so how do we actually do it? Uh, one easy way um, is just do nothing, and then you know, the hardware and the software will take care of some of this for you. So there's a thing called the warp scheduler, that if one warp is busy doing, uh, is stalled by, um, by, by something, it can switch to another warp and, and execute some other instruction. Um, so this is an easy solution, it works okay, but you can do a little bit better. Um, so here's an example of how you can actually kind of um, schedule the warp group. So here I'm having uh, two warp groups. So each warp group is 128 threads. So this is on one, one, one SM, on one thread block. And what you want to schedule is that while grab warp group um, one is doing softmax, you want to do warp group two to be doing uh, matrix multiply. So that the tensor core is busy doing matrix multiply Why the exponential unit is do it, busy doing softmax. And you can schedule it in, in such a way that um, there's quite a bit of overlapping between the two warp groups. Um, and the way you get there is using techniques like warp specialization and ping pong scheduling. So you, you need to add some synchronization points uh, to sort of force the, the warp scheduler to, to schedule it in, in, in such a way. And this gives you quite a bit of a boost going from about one, uh, five, 580 teraflops to 640 teraflops. Okay, um, so that's, that's one way um, you can, you can um, overlap. So I, now I'll talk about um, low precision. Um, so why do we care about low precision? Um, in theory, it gives you, you know, double uh, the, the twice the thr throughput essentially for free. Um, so the, 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 the hardware can ex execute, for example, FP8 multipli uh, matrix multiplication at twice the throughput uh, uh, compared to FP16. But there's a trade-off. You know, uh, low precision means um, more numerical error. And there are ways you need to, to, to deal with that. Okay, so um, we need to borrow some techniques from the machine learning literature um, against this kind of recurring theme where we are optimizing on the system side, but we're borrowing techniques from other fields like machine learning. Um, so here, here's an example. If you can look at some of the features of, of uh, uh, in, when you run LLMs, some of them have very, very large magnitude. And Tim Detmer actually wrote an excellent paper called LM int 8 that sort of uh, uh, talked about, uh, about this. Sort of, uh, uh, I think it was a kind of a landmark pa paper talking about outliers. So I highly recommend checking out that paper. It's called LLM int 8. Um, and so how do we deal with these kind of um, features that have very large magnitude. If you just quantize naively, um, you suffer a lot of quantization error. So what you can do is you can sort of rotate everything by an orthogonal transformation and uh, spread, spread things out evenly. Um, so here's a here's kind of a little bit of, of, of math. I know it's early, so I won't, I won't do too much of this. Um, so you take a random orthogonal matrix M, uh, that means that M times M transposes the identity, and you rotate the query, so you transform the query from Q to um, Q times M before you quantize, and then you do the same for, for K. And you see that because M is orthogonal, uh, the dot product Q times uh, K transpose is preserved. But because it's a, a random rotation, all the features are kind of spread out, and so you reduce uh, numerical error here. Um, in practice, we can use things like Hadamard uh, transform, which is um, it's not a random orthogonal, but it's a special class of orthogonal matrices that you can do the rotation in order of uh, d log d instead of uh, d square, um, where d is the head dimension. And this can be fused with things like rotary embedding so that you essentially it costs, uh, it costs you nothing to do this, this kind of rotation. 
Okay, so how does this work? So we um, think we get about 1.6 to 2x speed up. These numbers are a little bit, good, you know, one or two months old. I think we've gotten quite a bit better numbers now. Um, so with, um, uh, with flash attention three, we can reach up to for uh, around 650 teraflops per second. So this is about 2x uh, better than flash attention two. Again, it's the you know, same algorithm, but a different way to program. Um, with uh, head, dim dimension, uh, head dimension 256, we can reach up to 750 teraflops. Um, and you know, this is essentially close to the speed of matrix multiply. Right? Um, so now we have really, really powerful primitives. You know, for a while, essentially, matrix multiply is essentially the fastest thing, and everything else was a lot slower. And now we have a really powerful primitive like attention that runs essentially as fast as matrix multiply on, on GPU. So that's, that's pretty great. Um, for FP8, um, we can reach up to 1.2 petaflops. I think most recently, um, we've been able to get to 1.3 petaflops. Um, and we will continue optimizing um, FP8, especially for, for inference, now that a lot of inference workload are running on FP8. So with that, I'd, I'd like to, to summarize. So um, flash attention three, this is a fast and accurate attention um, and optimized for modern hardware like Hopper. Um, and we'll, we'll continue working on, on other hardware, you know, AMD, GP, AMD GPU, TPU, um, Blackwell is coming, I'm really excited for that. Um, and two key ideas, one is asynchrony, um, and one is low precision. And the upshot is you can get faster training, better models with longer sequences. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here. Thanks so much for, for your attention.